Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Delaware County Community College Educational Foundation Annual Dinner. My name is Cindy Egeltinger, and I'm the chair of the Educational Foundation Board of Directors. I have the honor to represent tonight 27 business and community leaders who are inspired by the role Delaware County Community College plays in advancing the communities it serves. Our job is to raise funds and promote the college's mission as the center of educational opportunity in Delaware and Chester counties. And we are very, very pleased to be your host this evening. Before I introduce the members of the educational board, I would like to recognize all of you who have joined us here this evening. We really have a full house, it's amazing. Um, first, I'd like to also recognize our financial supporters you are individual community members, faculty, administration, and support staff members, philanthropic families, and representatives from not-for-profit organizations, private foundations, businesses, and corporations. So welcome to all of our financial supporters here this evening. Visionary and civic-minded and generous, you have provided more than 1.9 million for Delaware County Community College, its students, faculties, and staff in 2018-2019 year. And your actions demonstrate that you understand the value of education and the unique leadership role that the Delaware County Community College provides to our region. You are more than champions for our students. You are investors in our community and we are very proud of our partnership with you. Second, our student scholarship recipients and their families and friends here on their PF. Students, we realize you are balancing school, work, and family relationships and responsibility, and we greatly appreciate your presence to thank those who have helped you in your educational journey. I'm really looking forward to hearing from some of you later this evening. Third, the very hardworking participants in the Foundation Scholarship Program. Led by the Vice President for Enrollment Management, Paula Pitcher and her team, with great assistance from the academic deans and guidance from faculty and staff. The scholarship applications from 800 students were processed last spring and, semester, and summer, and 300 students received $625,000 for the 2019-2020 academic year. So thank you for all of the work that you do to match our individual deserving students with our donor intent. Very important. Before we hear from Don Heller, the president of the College Board of Trustees, I would like to just do a few more things. I would like to thank all of our sponsors whose names you see on our tables and on our screens this evening. The sponsors really provide the resources to make this dinner possible. And so thank you so much for your partnering with us. Can we give a round of applause for our sponsors? And this is also a really special night because we welcome Delaware County Community College alumnus, John Bailey, into our family of Wong Moss Outstanding Alumni Achievement Award winners. So welcome, Judge Bailey. We are very honored to welcome you, your family, friends, and colleagues, and we look forward to hearing from you later this evening. I would now like to recognize the Educational Foundation Board of Directors. Some of our board members have just joined us. Some have served for more than 20 years, and there's actually one member that just celebrated 30 years of service. Directors, I'll just ask you to stand as your name is called and remain standing, and audience, please hold your applause until the end of the introductions. So. Dylan Atkins, Patricia Benson, Karen Bogosian, LJ Burks, Sam Cohen, Brian Wilbur Coyle, Fred Felter, Linda, Laura Casper, Melissa Manny, Michael Magnavita, Trish McFarlane, Joe McGinn, Carl Needles, Rachel Patton, William Patterer, William Michael Rank, Don Soslow, Charles Stevenson, William Torian, and Sloan Walker. 
And then last not, not last not, but not least, uh, Paul Dubutian with 30 years of service. So thank you for all of your service. I also appreciate that several college board of trustees members have joined us tonight. Thank you for your leadership and your time this evening. Can I ask Marilyn Spicer, Bernice Clark Dickerson, Donald Heller, and Kevin Scott to stand and be recognized. And I now welcome Don Donald L. Heller, Chair of the Delaware County Community College Board of Trustees to the podium. Thank you. Good evening. Someone once told me, if you were speaking and dinner is after you, you should keep your remarks very short. So I will. Uh, our president, Dr. Uh, Dr. Joy Gates Black could not be here with us this, this evening, and so I have the honor of representing the college on her behalf. Uh, Joy decided that she had to do something uh, for the college, and so she made a little trip to San Francisco. And uh, I wish her well, and uh, she is going to be doing stuff uh, to deal with lobbying on behalf of the community colleges to ensure that uh, we're treated well uh, by Washington, even though they're going to do it from San Francisco. Uh, so, for Dr. Gates Black, one of the most rewarding benefits of serving as president of the Delaware County, Delaware County Community College is getting to know the students, and she does that all the time, and to be part of the story of the college. And those stories are as diverse as the communities served by the college. Our students are truly remarkable. And we are often moved by their strength, inspired by their motivation, and humbled by their determination and drive. And any of you have had the opportunity to attend our graduation ceremony and hear the stories of our students, uh, you would be truly moved. Uh, and so they are to be congratulated on their efforts to you know, continue their education. Support provided by our donors makes such a difference in our students' lives. Your support nurtures the culture of caring that exists at the college. Scholarships, awards, and financial gifts help our students achieve their goals. Through you, the college is able to offer services that meet the immediate needs of the students. Food supplies for our pantries, professional clothing for interviews, our textbook fund, faculty and staff who are working to improve the teaching and learning environment, and these services are possible because of you. It's your compassion and generosity that makes all the difference. And our students will continue that legacy, going out into society to be the leaders of a better tomorrow for our community. I think most people uh, who are donors are aware that most of our students stay right here in Delaware County and contribute to Delaware and Chester County, let's not forget our friends in Chester County, uh, and uh, make a difference in our community. And that's one of the really special things about Delaware County Community College in that we are educating and making better lives for our students uh, as they stay right here and, and contribute to our society locally. Uh, our faculty and staff, the Board of Trustees, and most importantly, our students appreciate your support. Uh, the, the people who contribute to help the students in their journey. Uh, tonight, our students will share their appreciation with you. And let me be the first to, be first to begin by saying thank you. I hope you enjoy a brighter future. Thank you. Good evening. Everybody's looking at me. 
Education was previously a struggle for me, having learning disabilities growing up in a learning environment which didn't foster a conducive learning environment from children needing a bit more help. After struggling with a few colleges after high school, I enlisted in the Army in 2006. Served honorably for four years on active duty, spent 14 months in Iraq. Spent since 2010 in the reserves, and after returning from a second deployment in early 2018, I struggled to reintegrate myself in my civilian employment at the post office. I returned from that tour not feeling fulfilled, had me wanting more for myself. I made the hard decision to leave my career and go to school full time. Fall 2018 semester ended with me achieving high honors, receiving emails from National Honor Society, Phi Theta Kappa, recently the National Technical Honor Society. I learned knife is never easy. Complacency, take over. I had grown accustomed to pushing myself through difficult situations, faced my own reservations and concerns about if I had made the right choice, if I would succeed. Here I am being recognized and humbled for sharing my story. I never felt I was entitled to anything, but simply work hard for what I've earned. And I wouldn't be up here if it wasn't for the donors for the scholarships that I'm being received, uh, that I had received. So the Torno family, Dr. Carroll, and the Office Depot, you're helping me out a lot by your contribution for helping me succeed. And I won't let you down. I will perpetuate your contribution by putting all myself into my education. I thank you. Good evening. As a girl, I, raised, I was raised by a single parent in West Africa, Liberia. I aspire to be a geologist specializing in pet children. I want to apply my skills to locate energy sources beneath the earth. While I continue to search for jobs and scholarships, I will remain grateful to scholarship uh, to this foundation for providing me such an opportunity like this. It makes me feel I am not alone on the journey of accomplishing my educational goals. And finally, I want to say a very big thank you to Pico for being part of my success story. Good evening. Um, first and foremost, how grateful and humble I am to have the opportunity to speak to everybody. Um, I look up to the people others look down on, Chinese proverb. For years, I battled a drinking addiction that went totally against who I am as a human being. Um, I went from being able to identify as a homeless, dumpster diving, non-hygienic man to be able to be asked to sponsor a child in Africa, to co-parent, to be able to motivate other students across the country. Um, after recording a 4.0 GPA, I now hold all high academic honors. I've been selected to Phi Theta Kappa where I'm a secretary there. I also um, was blessed to write an op-ed piece that was selected for the Philadelphia Inquirer. See, DC3 has been a great help, and I look forward to helping other students. Thank you to the foundation. Thank you, Rachel Patton. Um, I am just absolutely grateful and to all the donors that have helped us. We, the students of DC3, appreciate each and every one of you for supporting us. Last, I want to leave you with this. Delaware County Community College taught me a valuable lesson. College is not supposed to just change my bank account. College is supposed to change my soul. And I am forever grateful for the values I've learned. We'll be back after dinner and to share some more stories of our students. Well, good evening, everyone. Just give you a second to get back to your tables. 
I'm Rachel Hunsinger Patton. I'm the Vice President for Institutional Advancement um, at Delaware County Community College. I hope that you all enjoyed each other's company at the tables, um, as well as enjoyed the stories that our students shared with, your, er, with you earlier. Our students are going, we have some more students coming up in just a couple of minutes uh, to tell more of their personal journeys uh, at Delaware County Community College. Before we um, go any further though, I would like to thank you all for your patience and good humor as we try to feed an awful lot of people. This is a record turnout. So if you're still eating, I just appreciate your patience. And um, if you could join me in giving our, our hardworking servers a round of applause, I'd appreciate it. So I have the privilege of working with the college's um, educational foundation, um, and I appreciate their wise counsel and their oversight of our investments and um, their generosity and support of the foundation's mission. Um, but the best part about my job is actually working with our donors and talking to them about the values that they hold and how those values can be put in, into action for the betterment of our community um, through Delaware County Community College. Together, we really do ensure a brighter future for our region. To help you understand better how philanthropy impacts our students, I present you with a better future, part two. Good evening, everyone. My name is Denise Reyes. I started DCC in 1994 when I was 19 years old. I dropped out to have a baby, and when I tried to come back, I wound up having two more. My children are older now, so then I figured I could come back again. But in 2015, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. I suffered six, six rounds of chemotherapy and seven surgeries. I'm now a survivor, three years. <laughs> Thank you. So, so here I am at DCC again, 23 years later, actually 24 years now. My oldest son now takes care of me, makes sure I eat all my meals and have my books and supplies. My younger two make sure I get to class on time, even when I try to hooky. <laughs> I just have so many people looking out for me now, and I'd just like to thank Compass Group for supporting me with their contribution so I can finish what I started. Thank you. Wow, Deneen, that was hard, hard act to follow. I grew up hammering nails with my dad as we built our dream vacation home. My love for construction has led me to pursue a degree in skilled trades. From furniture building to welding, I use a plasma cutter to design metal. I endeavor to use my gifts and talents in arenas that are unconventional. I am presently tailoring my final project to convert my twin home into a duplex with the blueprints I have drawn in CAD class. I have an insatiable desire to learn. At the college, I am a member of the National Technical Honor Society and Phi Theta Kappa. Thanks. I have achieved a 3.8 GPA with God's help believe me, a construction supervision certificate and presently working on a CAD certification. Thank you for hearing my story and a huge thank you to Office Depot for providing me with this opportunity and making this night possible for me and my fellow students. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Patrick Stark. I'm an engineering major at Delaware County Community College, and I'm also in PTK. I guess we all are up here right now. Um, after an unconventional and rocky path, I returned to learn at 40. Opiates controlled my life for 20 years after a life-altering knee injury. DCC has helped me determine a career path in mechanical engineering and gain acceptance into both Temple and Widener University through the dual admission program. I would also like to add that as a result of my opioid use, I spent time incarcerated. And in 2014, I had one counselor from prison that helped me to enroll in school. I just want to say to all the humanities majors, such as psychology, psychiatry, social workers, drug counselors, that a lot of times you may think that you have 
more losses than wins, but do for people like myself who bring out the best, who you bring out the best in. And this scholarship will help me continue on my path of success and sobriety. And I'd like to thank South Coke Corporation and Mr. Fr uh, Frederola from the South Coke Corporation for giving me that scholarship. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. My name is Deborah Puji. When I was growing up, I had a true passion for animals. I became the proud parent for many types of furry friends, from gerbils to horses. I loved them and I wanted to become a vet. During my senior year of high school, I became pregnant and got married, giving birth to my son, Christopher. Unfortunately, it was not a good situation and my veterinary uh, studies were no longer an option. As I was raising my son, Christopher, his life was taken by my former husband who committed suicide in the process. I thought life was over at 20 years old. I eventually turned to alcohol to dull the pain over the next 30 years. I finally reached out for help and entered rehab, ending up in a women's recovery house. Three years later, I'm now the manager of that recovery house and my cat, Minx, is our therapy cat. My experience, strength, and hope are my greatest assets. My future business degree will assist in fulfilling my dreams to own a women's recovery home where pets are welcome. Without this, many women will not seek treatment or leave an abusive situation because they have no one to care for their pets. I want to thank the W.W. Uh, Smith Foundation Scholarship for uh, helping me realize my dreams, and thank you, everybody. All I can say is, wow. Uh, thank you, students. Those were uh, some simply amazing stories. So good evening. My name is John Moss, and it is my honor to chair and present the Wong Moss Outstanding Alumni Award each year. The award was created by my mother and I over 25 years ago to recognize outstanding alumni. My mother was a student, long-term trustee, and former chairman of the board before she passed away. The award was created in part as a testament to the struggles of my grandfather, uh, my grandfather faced as a Chinese immigrant who came to America as a teenager and who understood the enabling power of education. He taught himself English, completed his high school GED, and although it took him a while, was one of the first Asians to graduate with a technical degree in food chemistry from the University of California, Berkeley. Now, this was the Depression era and jobs were scarce. His first job was cooking soap in a soap factory, literally stirring soap for 12 hours. Um, he, uh, using his degree, he realized that there was a way to improve the, pr the process, uh, but his suggestions fell on deaf ears. He had himself transferred to the night shift where he could complete the process without anybody watching and use the uh, excess time to complete his studies. Eventually, he did go on to leverage his degree and applied, uh, leverage his degree in industry and applied the process of hydrogenation to food, which prevents oil and water from separating. His first patents were for peanut butter and salad dressing that you still see today. I am reminded of his challenges every time I buy a jar of peanut butter in the grocery store. The award was created to recognize those facing similar challenges. Tonight, we have three uh, representatives of past awardees in the audience. Uh, first, we have Denise Romanelli, who is a 2013 uh, awardee. And we also, in an interesting turn of events, we have John D. Bonaventuro, who is the 95 awardee and also spoke at tonight's honorees graduation, and as so happens, is a long-term friends of his. I, I understand they had something going on about how uh, people took too long at the podium, so I'll try to be quick, and they're probably <laughs> tapping on their watch right now, say, John, pick it up. Uh, but specifically tonight, I'd like to uh, recognize the family of our, of, uh, of our third recipient, um, Philadelphia firefighter Captain Matt Letourneau, who was received the award posthumously last year. Let's give him a round of applause. <laughs> Pre previous awardees have similar stories to my grandfather, and tonight's recipient is no exception. The award honors outstanding alumni who have won, distinguished themselves in their chosen field. Tonight's recipient has 34 years with the Tredyffrin Township Police Department, retiring as Detective Sergeant in charge of the Criminal Division, and has served as the Chester County Magisterial District Judge since 2012. The second criteria involves having a strong focus on community service. 
Tonight's recipient is an advocate for the elderly and those who are financially indigent. He serves on the board of the Westchester Food Cup Board and on the board of Plan of PA, who supports those with behavioral issues and intellectual disabilities. The third criteria involves ongoing support to education. Tonight's honoree completed his associate degree in 96 and went on to attain a master's from Farley Dickinson University. He has taught as an adjunct professor at Delaware County Community College, Immaculate University, and Wilmington University. And I'm also pleased to acknowledge that tonight's awardee was recognized late this summer with a citation from, the, from State Senator Andrew Dinneman for his work in the community and law enforcement. Tonight's honoree is a prime example of what a Delaware County Community College education can help enable. As I look out over the audience of students, faculty, administration, and college supporters, my hope is that the story of my grandfather, past recipients, tonight's honoree, or the students help motivate you to make a difference and to do just a little bit more. I can tell you that after chairing this award for over 25 years, the college and its graduates have truly made a difference in the lives of many. You should all be very proud to be part of this institution. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Judge John R. Bailey, this year's recipient of the Wong Moss Outstanding Alumni Award. Good evening, everyone. I am truly humbled to be standing up here before you, as many have no idea how Delaware County Community College has affected my career path, both educationally and personally. First of all, though, my special thanks to Delaware County Community College, and most importantly, the Moss family, for this prestigious reward. John, thank you so much. I'd also like to recognize Rachel Patton, Vice President and Executive Director of the College Foundation, Cindy Agledinger and Brian Coyle, Chair and Vice Chair of the College Foundation, as well as all the scholarship benefactors with us tonight who are helping the students of Delaware County Community College. I realize there's a lot of individuals behind the scenes to assist in such a program as this, and my thanks to everyone, especially Doug Ferguson. Where he went, he takes all funds. Doug, you have given me great support over the years, and most importantly, assist me with this evening. John, you're supposed to turn this page right here. Okay, I got it. To put everything into context, my mother was a family of 10, an immigrant to this country who never finished high school. My father graduated 12th grade and immediately went into the military. At that time, it wasn't unusual for a man, such as my father, to leave high school and immediately get a job without furthering his education. In addition, neither of my older sisters went to college. In my family, education wasn't highlighted or prized. It was something to get through so that you could get on with your life. I graduated from high school in 1973. I confess that as a senior in high school, I couldn't wait for school to be done. Yet even as a senior, I knew I wanted to go into law enforcement, and I knew where I wanted that job to be with or different township where I lived all my life. After graduating from high school, I remember a conversation I had with my father regarding me going to college. I wasn't entirely sure of his college material, but I was exploring options. My father made it clear that he wasn't financially able to help me, and frankly, he really didn't see the need for me to get additional education. Keep in mind, this was 1973, and my father was 40 years old when he had me. He had already lived a hard life in the military during World War II, and then later as a truck mechanic for Autocar. He faced constant layoffs and rehirings, especially around the holidays. He worked as much overtime as offered. He took the bus every morning so that my mother could have the car. I watched and learned from a man who worked many part-time jobs to put food on the table and clothing on our backs. His message was to never give up, and that determination and drive are as important as a dream itself. So late 1975, 
After hearing about Delaware County Community College, I enrolled. Even though it was one course in the criminal justice program, I knew this was the place for me. 1977, I became a police officer with the Trudeau Township Police Department. Again, the determination and drive are as important as the dream itself. Unfortunately, the financial aid awarded for law enforcement officers was discontinued, so I stopped. I was only 22 when I married my high school sweetheart, Denise. Then with the birth of our children, Brianna and Kaylin, came all the responsibilities and obligations of a family and managing a career. My education, once again, took a back seat. I was promoted detective in 1986, and a variety of training courses sparked my desire to return to Delaware County Community College. So in 1990, at the age of 35, I returned to Delaware County. I knew all the colleges talked about adult learners, but back then, Delaware County Community College was one of the few learning institutions that actually were supportive of adult learners with a major ongoing cares, responsibilities, not to mention odd working hours. This was a huge draw for someone like me who could be called out of class at a moment's notice. Delaware County allowed me this flexibility and the professors understood my crazy schedule. For that, I was extremely thankful and as I was able to receive my associate's degree from Delaware County Community College in 1996, I advanced through police work and was promoted Detective Sergeant in 2002 and on to the FBI National Academy in Quantico, Virginia, where I lived for 11 weeks. This was the holy grail of law enforcement training. The common denominator here, the foundation set by Delaware County Community College, and I carried this with me all the way through my master's at Fairleigh Dickinson University five years later. My message to our students and everyone here this evening is to never stop learning, but remember where you got your start. I am sure you will be asked by those who admire and look up to you how it all began. You see, in my current position as a judge, and the times I have had teaching at Delaware County Community College have been the most rewarding experiences one can have knowing how all this began. The connections here, the interactions, and most importantly, the networking abilities that occur are priceless. Thank you again. I am so humbled by this important award. Good evening. I am Felicia Lafredo, a Delaware County Community College alumna from the class of 2018. Students, I was in this very room just two years ago as a scholarship recipient. I am here tonight as a donor. They say it takes a village to raise a child. As a single mother of two, I know this to be very true. But what about an adult? As we leave the comforts of childhood and adolescence and dive headfirst into adulthood, we do not simply bid farewell to our beloved village. It simply changes. When you made the wise decision to begin or continue your educational journey at Delaware County Community College, your village extended. Here, we all come from different walks of life. We have different socioeconomic backgrounds, different interests and career paths, but we all have one common thread. We are all here because we care about our future. Some of your classmates may be struggling in ways you could never imagine. Their financial futures may feel uncertain. I know this to be very true because I was one of them. Raising two children with one income sometimes felt like it was impossible. My first semester of nursing school rolled around in 2015, but before I began, I needed to come up with over $3,000 for tuition, fees, uniforms, and probably the most expensive of, expensive of all, as my nursing friends know, textbooks. To say I was scared is an understatement. Then, one day I received a call from Kathy Breslin, the beloved former executive director of the Delaware County Community College Educational Foundation. On that day, when my tuition bill was well over $3,000, with very limited federal funding available to me, Kathy's voice was like that of an angel. She was the one person from my newfound village that truly contributed to my personal and academic growth. She told me that I met the requirements for a scholarship that would cover nearly the entire two years of nursing school. 
She said that all I had to do was write an essay. To the drawing board I went. I wrote an essay explaining why I chose to pursue a career in nursing and how I intended to contribute to the future of such a very rewarding field. By the grace of God and with help from my village here at Delaware County, I was selected to receive a scholarship from the John Lazarich Foundation. I could not believe it. This was such a weight off of my shoulders in more ways than one. This meant that I didn't have to worry about paying for school and I didn't have to stress over choosing paying for diapers instead of tuition. What a true blessing this was for my family. While I was still in school, I knew that I wanted to somehow give back to a place that gave so much to me. I knew that I wanted to contribute, especially to the nursing program, a program that changed me forever and shaped me into the compassionate, driven, optimistic nurse that I am today. So after I graduated in May 2018 and was finally financially stable, I chose to create a foundation. I am proud to say that the first scholarship recipient from that foundation will be at this event next year. Generosity is one of the reasons that I am able to stand here as a licensed registered nurse, and I am so grateful to be able to pay it forward. I think it's safe to say that at this point in the night, we've all had a wonderful meal. And so with gratitude in mind, students, I am asking that you take a moment to continue the flow of generosity. I ask that you take the gratitude that you received and give back to the village that so generously gave to you. Gifts that you pledge tonight will go to the Delaware County Community College Student Resource Center. Through this, fellow students in need can access assistance to address emergencies and keep themselves enrolled in school. Resources available include SEPTA passes, rent assistance, food, mental health emergencies, and many more. I know that funds are tight and I'm not asking you to give up your grocery money or rent. I'm asking you to consider $1, $5, or 10. Every single penny truly counts. So we have this pledge card here. It's not necessary to do anything tonight but to make a pledge. There are pledge forms and pens available on your tables. Simply fill out the pledge form and drop it into the box in the lobby as you leave. We will kindly follow up later this week with a link to the online Make a Gift page so that you can fulfill your pledge of paying it forward. I hope you will show your scholarship provider that they are a role model for you, so join them as one of our supporters. Students, thank you for considering my request and accept my deepest thanks and my most sincere well wishes for your bright futures. Thank you, Felicia. So before we close, I would like to thank our students who shared their stories, whether here on stage or at your tables. Could I have a round of applause for our students? <laughs> I want to thank Judge Bailey, who encourages us all to bring our determination and drive with us every day. We are honored to include you as our Wong Moss Award winners. I also want to recognize Doug Ferguson, Susan Elman, Kathy De Los Santos, and Linda Super, as well as our work study student, Lisette Gayton. They put in many long hours to keep track of who's coming, where they're sitting, and what they're eating. So if I could have a round of applause, I'd appreciate it. We also had a number of folks who just pitched in at the last minute to help us handle name badges and, and getting you registered, so thank you for that. Um, you will notice, I mentioned earlier, that this is a big turnout, um, the largest in the Educational Foundation history. We have 375 attendees tonight, which is um, over 100 more than last year. And one of the reasons uh, for the increase is that we have several new scholarships that we, um, that we set up to be funded for this year, for 2019. 2020, so I would just like to give a shout out to those new folks. Um, they include the Franklin Mint Federal Credit Union Scholarship, the Ed and Sylvia Weinrot Scholarship, the New Choices Board Scholarship in memory of Sandy Guerra, the Ted Nilsson Memorial Scholarship, and the Matthew Cleveland Memorial Scholarship. Thank you, new supporters. In June, 
We also created the Kelleher Connect Career Opportunity Fund. Thanks to the generosity of the Kelleher Family Foundation, we were able to provide financial assistance to more than 75 additional students this fall. <laughs> Kelleher, Kelleher funds allow us to fast track students into certificate programs that lead to good paying jobs in our community. The funds are applied to the gap that exists on a student's bill after federal financial aid is applied, which means that students enrolled in the Kelleher Connect Career Opportunity Program can graduate debt free. The $425,000 gift made by the Kelleher family this past June was year one of a five-year commitment that they've made to Delaware County Community College. This is the largest private gift that the college has ever received. I'd like to recognize their, both their generosity to the college, but also their commitment to our community, to fueling the pipeline and providing um, access to good paying jobs that have growth in our area. I'd like to ask Andy and Kevin and Kristen Kelleher to please stand and be recognized, and then for Andy to join me at the stage. Thank you, Rachel, for those kind words. Um, I forget the name of the list young lady that just spoke, um, Felicity? Felicia. Felicia, very inspiring. Thank you for sharing your story. Somebody's gotta be last. I think I'm gonna wind it up. Uh, first of all, I'd like all the Kelleher Connect um, recipients st to stand up and be recognized, please. <laughs> My wife and I did this for you. Um, Hopefully I had a chance to meet most of you. Uh, if not, maybe my kids did. But you are the next generation of the workforce. You're the next generation of civic leaders and the next generation of religious leaders. My generation depends upon you. Uh, thank you for telling me your stories. I was, uh, I was elated. One young lady told me I saved her life. She was living in a car and the $5,000 award uh, did in fact change her life. So it was very, very, heartwarming for me. Um, my generation has made it tough on you guys because, uh, uh, you know, we've uh, got federal deficits now that are outrageous that your generation are going to have to to pay. Uh, we've, ra we've raised the cost of tuition to outrageous levels where kids end up in debt with crazy amounts of, of debt. Hopefully our gift uh, can help minimize that and uh, Again, thank you for coming tonight. You can. My, my journey with uh, DC Cubed uh, really started about two years ago. Up until that time, having been pretty much a, not a lifelong resident of Delaware County, but the majority of my, of my life and my marriage and my career, um, I really didn't know a lot about DC Cubed. I didn't really know anybody that graduated from there. Um, I knew it was uh, on 252, and there was a red light at Media Line Road, and there's a big sign there. But you really couldn't even see the college. I mean, it's obscured by the, by the trees. So I didn't know anything about it, to be honest. Uh, that changed two years ago. I applied, at the age of 60, I applied to DC Cubed uh, to uh, get my emergency medical technician's degree. It was a six-month course. I um, got a chance to meet some great instructors. Uh, one of them uh, who was our primary instructor, Arthur Berlin, who otherwise known as Papa Smurf. <laughs> All the EMTs and paramedics know that. Um, Papa Smurf uh, has served 50 years in the Springfield Fire and Rescue as a volunteer. Uh, one of my other instructors was Matt Latorno. I got to know Matt pretty well. Very inspiring uh, young man, great teacher, and as many of you know, Matt was, was tragically killed uh, trying to save somebody in a burning house in North Philadelphia a 
a year ago. I also had the opportunity to meet a lot of the students, all of the students, um, on breaks uh, during class when we weren't supposed to be talking, but we did anyway. Um, I also met a lot of the police cadets down the hall at the police uh, academy, and I met a lot of the paramedics right next door. So they told me their stories, and what I, what I realized was a couple thousand dollars means a lot to these people. Most of the kids were working full time, they're going to night school, a lot of them had family obligations, and so I was a bit brainwashed in thinking that you had to spend $50,000 to go to college. And I quickly found out that, you know, for a lot of people, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 can change your life. So that's why we did it. Um, so about six months ago, as Rachel mentioned, we approached Delaware County Community College, my wife and I. She's sorry she can't be here. She's ill today. Um, we met with, you know, Rachel Hunziker-Patton. We met with uh, Dr. Joyce Gates Black, and we may, met with uh, Karen uh, Kozichin. I probably butchered her name, but Karen, sorry if you're out there. And they really, we, they listened to us, what we, our goals were. They gave us great tours of the facility. They, they uh, explained to us the high um, job placement rate, 95%, it's unbelievable, and, and, and the curriculum that they offered. And so I appreciate Rachel and, and Dr. Joy and Dr. Karen for doing that. Uh, I've come to realize now that I do know um, a lot of DC Cube graduates. Uh, they're all over Delaware County. They're, my, they're our mechanics who works on our cars. They're the HVAC people that come in our house in the middle of January when, when it's broken. Uh, they're the allied health professionals that keep us healthy. And they're the police, the EMTs, and the paramedics that keep us safe. So I thank uh, all of you for, for listening to my story. And thank you, students. We really hope we can do more as we go forward. But um, we're very, very proud. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Andy. So um, this was a really wonderful night. I s hope that you all had a good time. We just we had great conversation at our tables. I hope you did too. Um, we would, as we break down, we would like to have all of the students and donors come forward for a group photo on the stage. But pretty much we're finished here. I wish you safe travels, and I'm look forward looking forward to seeing you all again next year. Thanks again.